good day and welcome to the IEEE Computer Society's presentation on how to avoid the top five mistakes IT pros make when architecting a backup and disaster recovery solution by Jason Snook. This webinar is proudly sponsored by Quorum. My name is Amir Drakis and I will be moderating today's presentation. At the end of the presentation, we will have time for questions. As questions occur, please type them into the box provided and press the submit button. You do not need to wait until the end of the presentation to submit any questions. Now, let me introduce you to today's speaker. Jason Snook lives, works, and plays in Eugene, Oregon. He's been working in IT as a systems engineer, network engineer, and finally IT director for over 15 years. He's worked on the customer side of engineering solutions, working with vendors, and dealing with the buying end of technology prior to working with Quorum. Jason's been at Quorum for just over two years as a systems engineer and brings the customer perspective to the world of technology sales. Ladies and gentlemen, Jason Snook. Thank you very much, Amir. Yeah, again, this is Jason Snook. Uh, quick background again, just to tie into what Amir was saying. Uh, prior to taking uh, on this role in the uh, pre-sales world of systems engineering, worked in the IT space and the infrastructure side for 15 or so years, and one common thread I had was either inheriting um, uh, companies or positions where I had to resolve some issues within the infrastructure. And uh, one of the, the, the underlying uh, tenets of running an infrastructure is how do you back it up? How do you make sure that it's online always? And um, as I was thinking about this and coming up with this, uh, this topic, I came up with uh, five general mistakes that I personally have either been uh, part of, um, either because of uh, you know, uh, uh, the environment that I was inheriting, uh, the people I was working with, or just generally I, I feel like these are some some pretty common problems that a lot of us in the IT space can identify with. So let's jump right in. So top five that I'm gonna talk about today, things that we wanna avoid. Now we're talking specifically about how do you architect a solution that is designed to keep your systems online regardless, regardless of the outage. Uh, the first one is overly complicated solutions. Um, uh, second one, using production systems as your storage or backup target. We're going to jump into partial versus full site recovery. We'll talk about that a little bit. Mixing products and vendors, and then finally wrap it up with some scalability, scalability limitations. Uh, so throughout this presentation, I want to, I want to explain also some uh, uh, sales tips or buying tips, I, I should say, uh, that you guys can leverage on your end when buying your next technology solution. Uh, I have learned a ton in the last two and a half years being in the pre-sales role, and I definitely want to share some of that information with you guys as we walk through these. So jumping right into it, let's talk, let's do a little history lesson. Um, I'm sure a lot of the people on the phone today have been around since we were backing up our data to tape. Um, tape is still a very viable option for long-term archiving. Uh, it's very resilient. Um, but we quite honestly have moved beyond the phase of just backing up to tape. Um, we had then uh, introduced virtualization and um, uh, lower cost spinning disk and even cloud resources. So one of the next evolutionary steps in, in doing backups was taking our data and sending them to a mix of either tape, uh, disk, or uh, cloud solutions like uh, AWS or Azure. This typically um, was the, the, the time and frame, the, the time frame when virtualization was just kind of coming out and people were put, dipping their toe into it and seeing if it was gonna work for them. And we're still primarily backing up data only um, we did have the ability to back up system state and OS volume, but recovery, it was still pretty far out. Um, back in this day, if you were expected to bring a server, an entire server back online, that BMR process, the bare metal restore process, it could take hours, could take days. It was definitely a nights and weekends approach. That was kind of the misery of your everyday IT guy. Now let's fast forward to today. Now today we have this uh, advent of hybrid or unified uh, solutions that allow us to essentially protect anything in an in, in a uh, IT environment. It does not matter where it's coming from. It could be a physical server, a virtual server, an EC2 instance, um, workloads put into Azure containers. It doesn't matter what a company has. There are solutions out there now that focus on quick, almost immediate recovery. And we've made this quantum leap from recovering the data to recovering the entire servers. So I like to call this the, the hyper-converged backup solution. This is, this is the world that we live in today. Almost every vendor that you talk to today 
um, that is uh, selling and in the space of selling the idea of recovering or uptime. We're all in, in this idea of being able to almost instantly recover uh, not only data, but servers, the OSs, and the applications, regardless of the outage, and also giving you that second layer of protection, meaning business continuity. So that's where we're at today. So what is the goal of the investment that companies make in a BDR strategy? BDR meaning backup and disaster recovery. Well, it's, it's pretty simple. The, the, the main goal here is to maintain uptime. Uh, we live in a world now where iPhones are easy to use. Um, email is accessible from anywhere and at, from any time. And generally speaking, our IT department is expected to catch up to those same set of expectations, meaning uptime, meaning I need to have my systems and my solutions always available regardless of what happened to them. This is now the new world of expectations set to us by customers, set to us by our internal expectations, meaning our CIO and down. So the goal here is to take um, a solution or take your infrastructure. Your infrastructure could involve some virtualization, could involve physical, some cloud resources. Obviously, you're going to have some data and applications that are important to you, that are critical to you. The new world of EDR, the new expectations of BDR, is, it doesn't matter what happened to them. They're always online. So how do we get to that point? Well, one way is to avoid some very common mistakes that I think a lot of us can resonate with. The very first one I want to talk about is mistake number one, overly complicated solutions. Okay, so I took a job once. I was a system administrator, and I showed up, did my onboarding. A month later, I'm kind of getting my feet underneath me, and, and I'm doing my, uh, kind of doing my investigative uh, portion of the company, trying to figure out what I'm actually inheriting. And what I, what I had learned was that I'm inheriting a uh, typical IT solutions where it is cobbled together with multiple vendors trying to do the same thing. And this is a mistake. And why is it a mistake? Because, well, there's, fair, there's, a, there's a few reasons. We in the IT space are pulled in so many different directions. The last thing we need is, let's take backups, for example. The last thing we need is for backups to be um, expensive, complicated, difficult to use, uh, we definitely don't want to have to train ourselves on how to run backup and recovery. Um, mistake number one is all about making your life, the IT administrator, the system admin, the IT director, making your life simple in the event of an of a emergency. So why is, why is people keeping things simple uh, important? Well, let's talk about ransomware. When ransomware hits, you know, we could, we could do an entire webinar on ransomware and, and the threat vectors and how it gets in and what kind of impact it's having. Obviously, it's been in the news lately. But it's nothing new. I mean, ransomware has been around since the late 80s. It's been around since uh, right around that, uh, the, the days of the Melissa virus. Um, it's become prevalent in the last decade or so, and specifically in the last 12 months, it's hit an all-time high as far as its global outreach and the amount of people that are impacted by it. So let's talk very, very quickly about if ransomware hits. You, the administrator, are tasked with, um, are tasked with getting – your systems back online and never paying the ransom. Uh, I worked as a security uh, administrator for a while, and one of the concepts that I learned was defense uh, in depth. And what that means is, very simply, you've got your data and your systems uh, in the center, and then you've got layered security all the way out. So you've got physical security, you've got locks on the doors, you've got your firewall, your intrusion protection, you've got your AV, host based security. Right next to the core of your, your goods is the last line of defense. Let's call that backup. So what should a good BDR solution do for you? Simply put, get users back online. Your BDR should be able to verify that you're recovering clean data. There is nothing worse than uh, recovering data that has already been compromised. So you've got to have a way to inspect your recovery before you actually recover it. Uh, the solution is in place to Make it so in that ransomware event, you never, ever pay the ransomware. And, and, and as far as um, there, there's got to be a path back to production. There's got to be a way that you get back from your recovery solution back to your production servers. I want to paint a scenario for you real quick. You come to, more, you come to work on Monday morning at 10 a.m. Marion Accounting says, uh, I inadvertently, I screwed up. I open up an Excel um, spreadsheet that was sent to me by someone who I thought I knew, and I, oh, I'm so sorry, I enabled macros. And guess what? You're, all of her 
UNC paths that she had access to are now locked. Okay, this is this is the ransomware scenario that none of us want to have to face. You're now staring at a <clears throat> how to decrypt.htm file and it's telling you, hey, if you want your files unlocked, you're going to pay us $300, $600, $1,200, whatever the case is. At this point, uh, we're going to start with step one, okay? You, the administrator, are going to say, okay, my file server is now compromised. Pull the network cable. If it's a, it's a, if it's a virtual server, disconnect networking immediately. Now you're going to start your investigative um, process. You are now going to be the detective. You're going to have to go out and find how many servers, how many resources were actually impacted by Marion Accounting making a really, really dumb move. And so you're going to start checking the environment. One way that you can check your environment is scan every single one of your UNC paths for known files. Um, how to decrypt that HTM is a pretty common one. Dot server, dot crypt, dot enigma, dot lock. Look for any of these files on your network. If you find them in any shares, uh, pull the cable from that network, uh, from that server immediately. This is the step of checking your environment to try and detect it, uh, determine what is the scope of this problem. Uh, the next step, I know everyone in here is going to want to jump right into recovery because you have people screaming at you. You have people saying, demanding, hey, i got to get back online ASAP. But don't do it yet. you got to find patient zero. Patient zero is Marion Accounting. You've got to find out where the launch point was because you want to avoid, um, you have to avoid um, the whack-a-mole approach. you got to avoid uh, doing a recovery, and then all of a sudden, oh, my gosh, your recovery is now compromised as well. One easy way to find patient zero is to go to that how to decrypt file or any of the decrypted files and pull up the metadata, pull up the properties. It will tell you when it changed and who changed it. Do a little backtrace. A lot of times you'll find the GUID, the, the, the very unique ID that of the PC, or I'm sorry, of the security account that locked those files. You can backtrace that and you can send it back to production. You can find out who is that person who actually launched that threat, get that person offline, send them home, with a, a little mini vacation day, if you will. But the key here is to avoid the whack-a-mole approach, okay? The way that you do that, again, is you backtrace, get that PC offline. You can deal with her later. Let, let her take a quick uh, day off. Just make sure you get that PC off the network immediately. Now, it is time to recover. Now, recover, right before you recover, you need to look at your backup solution to find out the known, to find the known good state. We all probably remember those old uh, the, the Windows NT, Windows 2000, uh, 2003 days. You could boot a server to a known good state. Well, this is the same thing. You want to boot. You want to boot your, or you want to look at your recovery mechanism and find out at which point in time in, in the past is is good data um, residing. You don't want to recover compromised data. So I'm going to jump to the quorum world. If you had quorum, it's pretty simple. Instead of doing a file-level restore of those UNC paths that have been compromised, you don't do that because that takes a long time. If you had to pull 10 terabytes from a cloud provider, you're going you're to be in a really bad spot. If you've got to pull you know, multiple terabytes from your recovery solution um, and put them back down to your production server, it's going to be a while. If you have Quorum on board, you literally boot up a clone of your file server, in this case, or application server or database server, what was, whatever was compromised. Boot up a clone from any point in time and check it. Check to make sure that it is not compromised. Once you find that snapshot that's good, push it out to the production network. Boot it up into the production network and tell your users, hey, you're back online. Go about your business. This will take seconds. Now, in the quorum world, um, we're backing up all your servers um, as frequently as every 15 minutes if you wanted to. You're going to find that snapshot that's good. You're going to boot the clone. You're going to run from the quorum appliance until you can fix the production server and fix patient zero. Okay? That is called launching the recovery nodes. It is designed, um, our solution in particular, is designed to uh, run your production environment while you're fixing uh, the, the compromised production servers. If your backup and recovery solution is not able to do this, then it's, maybe it's time to start looking at a different way of doing this. Now it's time to do that deep clean. Now on the server side, you can either go out and find third-party tools or, or go out and try and clean that system yourself, or 
you can do a really cool technology or a really cool trick, and it's called incremental BMR. You could literally fix your production server by overwriting the bad blocks. So you could take a known good state from the, the, the quorum appliance and you could do an incremental BMR to fix the production server. That's how you get back to production and clean the production server all in one swoop. Now, how do you clean that patient zero? I always like the nuke and pave approach. I, I like the idea of taking a Windows client operating system, formatting it, pushing out a new image, being done with it. I, I'm not a fan of trying to troubleshoot and diagnose, uh, diagnose and save a client PC. That's my own personal opinion. Everyone is going to do their own thing. But the main thing here is that you have been able to sidestep a ransomware event without paying very, very quickly. Um, the recovery nodes or the clones that you can boot up on, on your backup vendor is going to save your day. It's going to get your data back, get your users back online without ever having to consider paying that, that ransom. Okay, enough of the ransomware stuff. That was, a, that was a nice little tangent that we went on. Let's talk about mistake number two. This is so incredibly common in the world of backup and recovery vendors who are software only, okay? The idea here is, well, let me paint a scenario for you. The idea here is that um, a user or a system administrator invests in the latest and greatest uh, backup and recovery solution. It's all software-based, and they say, hey, I've got this extra SAN, or I've got this hypervisor that's being underused. Let's go ahead and just run the, the backup solution on a, on a hypervisor that's uh, also shared with production or maybe part of my farm. Or let's put the backup data on either a secondary SAN or a volume on my production SAN. Well, obviously this is bad because if your hypervisor is compromised, your backup solution is compromised. If your SAN is compromised, um, then that is um, also compromised if, for your recovery. You will not be able to recover, okay? So it is so incredibly tempting to go out and buy a backup and recovery solution that is software-based and leverage production hardware. We all have thought about it or maybe have done it specifically because of cost. I know I was at fault here. Um, one challenge, one mistake I made that I will never, ever do again in the IT space was I went down that path and I bought software only backup solution because I could not justify, I could not convince the powers that be at this company that they needed to invest in completely separate, a completely separate solution. It was all about budget and it absolutely um, was a frustrating experience when we had to recover from a SAN failure that also had some of my backup data. It didn't have all of it, but it had some of it. So I had to go back to the CIO or the, C, um, the CEO at that case and say, hey, listen, Instead of paying X for a, full, uh, a fully separate backup and recovery solution, we paid a quarter of that for software only, and look what it got us. It got us to the point where we can only recover some of our solution because it was leveraging a production SAN. It's tempting, guys. I know it's tempting, but don't make this mistake. One way that you can mitigate this mistake, just go into your, your decision makers up front and say, we need to do a better job of architecting backup, backup and recovery and this is how much it's going to cost. Spec out a solution that shares nothing with production. It doesn't share hypervisor, it doesn't share storage, it doesn't share network stack. It should be completely separate. That is mistake number two that we've got to avoid. <clears throat> now, number three, partial versus full site recovery. You guys are going to see a thread here, a common, uh, two common threads here as we go through these mistakes. This is the second one that's all about budgeting for the proper recovery experience. It's very, very tempting, and, and oftentimes we're forced to do this because of budget. But here's the scenario. You may have one backup vendor for your second tier applications and another backup vendor for your critical applications that you cannot live without. Um, but one thing that I have experienced and one thing that I would like you guys to take note of is don't underestimate the impact of a site-wide outage. You may think that your production applications, uh, having the, a copy of them sitting up in a cloud provider will, will save the day and get your company back up and running. But the impact of having every single one of your servers offline is absolutely devastating. And the reason being is you could have dependent servers that you didn't completely account for. Meaning, what if you designed a BDR solution that <clears throat> was designed to instantly recover 10 of you, out of your 50 servers? Well, sure, you can re recover 10, but those remaining 40 servers, those are dead in the water. 
those are going to be um, have to be resurrected by some other means. Uh, this again is a case of um, go to the decision makers ahead of time and make the case for the proper budget for a BDR solution that com that uh, protects everything. And what I mean by everything is every single data piece of data, every single application, every single server OS, you need to be able to instantly recover locally and remotely. We work in a day and age now where the cost of these solu this solution is dramatically less than what it, what it cost in, in previous days to build out a remote, a completely remote data center. Um, I remember working as an IT director for a company in Austin, and we had a business continuity demand. We had, we had to be, essentially, to be compliant with contracts that we were going to go after, we had to keep a copy of our data and our servers and our applications at a secondary data center. Literally, it's like building a second infrastructure. It's insanely expensive, complicated, takes manpower, takes cycles away from the IT department of actually being innovative. We live in a world now where you can literally take a copy of your data center and hold it somewhere else in a cloud provider or your secondary site easily and have the ability to instantly fail over an entire site, every single server, with a single click. That is the day that we live in now. So mistake number three, don't underestimate um, specking out a partial BDR whenever you have the expectation or the need to do a full site recovery. <clears throat> Let's jump to mistake number four. This, again, common thread here, guys. Common thread is keeping things simple. There, you cannot underestimate the power of one. The power of one meaning the power of one vendor, one person, one throat to choke, whatever you, however you want to put this. <clears throat> Mixing products and vendors is one of those things where we do out of necessity or we haven't in, in, inherited. Let's take your everyday environment that has a, a hybrid infrastructure, meaning they have some physical they have uh, maybe a NAS for some Tier 2 storage. They have SAN for clustered VMs and Tier 1 storage. And they have maybe some EC2 instances or some Azure containers that they're, they're leveraging for either permanent or temporary workloads. All of this stuff is probably protected by more than one vendor currently. Um, well, the challenge with having more than one vendor is what if your physical server goes down? You need a runbook that is simple. And if you've got three vendors to cycle through to say, oh, wait, 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 was it protected by this guy or this guy? Or um, in a scenario where you and or your staff is unavailable, maybe out of the office, God forbid you take a vacation. Um, if you have an outage, you want the recovery of that outage to be as simple as possible. You want your CEO to be able to do it. You want to be able to dial into your CEO and say, hey, listen, I'm out of the office. Uh, server A, B, and C are down. I need them up ASAP. Go to this website, click this button, and you're done. It's back up and running. And you get that, um, you get that solution by not mixing products and vendors. Pick a vendor that can protect anything, okay? I like to call it environment agnostic, meaning I do not care what your environment has. There should be one vendor that can protect everything. Your SAN, your NAS data, your physical servers, your hypervisors from VMware or Hyper-V or Zen or Acropolis or KVM. There's so many different hypervisors out there today, but there are backup vendors um, that can protect everything, that can literally take a copy of all of your data regardless of where or what it is. It could be out in EC2. It could be in Rackspace. It could be at your MSP. doesn't matter. Uh, there are vendors out there that can take a snapshot of it Hold it in a state that can be instantly recovered. This is, again, I'm boiling down to the power of one, the power of a single vendor to protect everything, the power of one dashboard to instantly recover. Uh, I, I equate backup and recovery, unfortunately, to insurance. We all have to have it. We, we, there's a demand to maintain uptime, but shouldn't we have an insurance solution that is simple to use and it's a single solution. We don't want to have multiple vendors in play because we know what they do. We know what vendors do. They point the finger to the hardware guy or they point the finger to the other person. Um, in our world, in Quorum's world, we don't do that. We take control of the entire backup recovery business continuity solution from the very start to the very end. And I'll talk about that here in a second. Mistake number five. Okay. 
scalability limitations. If you are working with a backup vendor for your next backup solution and they don't ask you what your growth plan is, you're working with the wrong vendor. If they don't expect that your data is going to grow and build in a solution that will last five years, you're working with the wrong vendor. If they are not asking you, hey, what is your daily change rate? And if they don't have tools that can show you what your daily change rate is and show you what your growth pattern is, you're working with the wrong vendor. And the reason being, again, you don't want to have to make an investment in year one and come back at year one and a half or two and say, oh, my gosh, I'm out of space. I can't back up anything anymore. If you're dealing with that, you're dealing with the wrong vendor. Um, we at Quorum take a completely different approach. We do an exhaustive site survey that, said, that shows us your entire environment, um, we don't, we're not in the market to just sell you a box. We're in the market to make sure that you get a backup and recovery solution that fits today and fits you for the next three to five years. That is a very, very important um, issue to, to be concerned with. So uh, there are some vendors out there that love to just sell you the smallest box as possible and knowing that you're going to come back in a year saying, oh, my gosh, I need more space. I need to upgrade. Don't do that, guys. Look at a solution that expects data growth, and also has a plan to scale up. Um, we have a plan to scale your environment up or out. And what I mean by that is if your data footprint grows, we have a very easy way of adding drive space. If your compute needs grow, we also have another way of, of adding compute. And you can do that separate from one another. You're not tied into a standard, you know, I like to call it a pizza box approach where you buy one appliance here and another appliance there. With our solution, you can actually, it's more of a, a unified solution where uh, you can grow storage independent of compute. And that is important for those customers that might see a data growth separate from a VM growth or vice versa. So let's talk about what should your um, backup and recovery solution look like. Well, it's got to be simple. We, we live in a day and age where uptime is an absolute demand. And we're not in a world, you guys are not being paid to sit around and watch and make sure something doesn't break. You should be, you should free up your time, your IT staff's time to be innovative and create solutions that actually help your company, not just band-aid the next approach. It's got to be simple. It's got to be dependable. It's got to work when you need it. It's got to have a, an automated self-testing function that assures recovery. It's got to be comprehensive. Comprehensive meaning single vendor that protects everything. Pretty simple. Environment agnostic got to be able to protect everything regardless of where you are now or where you are going. A lot of customers are now on-prem and a mix of on-prem and cloud, and they're going to be moving more to cloud resources. Your backup vendor, you shouldn't have to replace your backup vendor if you start sending more infrastructure or more resources or workloads out to the cloud. That backup vendor has got to have a tie into your most common cloud uh, providers got to be unified. It's got to be that one um, solution that can scale up and scale down. It's got to be robust. Um, I like to call it uh, RPE, Recovery per Performance Expectation. We'll talk about that in a second. All that means is that if you have to fail over to your recovery solution today, A, can you do it quickly, like a couple, sec uh, a couple minutes? Uh, B, if you failed it over, would people be complaining about performance? Well, in Quorum's world, they wouldn't because all of our solution is built around the idea that if you fail over to Quorum, you're failing over to something that runs at 25,000 IOPS. That is a very, very high number of IOPS compared to uh, all of the vendors that are in the backup and recovery world. We literally can power up VMs that will operate potentially faster than what your production servers currently operate at. That's what your next solution, that's what your backup and, and recovery solution should look like. So very, very quickly here, guys, let me introduce Quorum. We are that one-click instant recovery vendor that does backup. We instantly recover your servers, data, and applications. We deduplicate and we compress to make efficient use of the storage both locally and at the remote DR. A remote DR can be you or it can be us. Very, very simple. Think of it as taking a literal copy of your infrastructure and putting it at a secondary site for a complete business continuity solution. You can use our solution at any time for testing, either automated HA, meaning local testing, or automated DR testing. You can also run complete DR tests to satisfy compliance. Um, you can archive data with us for as long as you need. So gone are the days of buying a solution that only holds backup data for 30 or 45 days. 
Now, with a click of a button, you can extend that retention period out to years if you wanted to. You don't have to go out and find a new, back, a new archive vendor. Your backup vendor can now be your archive partner. With our solution, you can, you can use migration. Migration just means if you have servers that you want to um, uh, create clones of, you can literally create clones of your servers using our backup appliance. This is kind of revolutionary. This basically means that with the Quorum solution, it's not there just as an insurance policy. It's actually adding value to your environment because you, you can use it to distribute and build servers from the backup data on the appliance itself. This, again, this is, a, this is a great way to justify going to a new backup and recovery solution. We also monitor. We're looking for outages on your, in your environment. When we see an outage, we tell you about it. Recovery for us is literally a single click, and I'll show you guys that in just a second. So all about Quorum, we're all about being simple and fast. We are that single vendor experience to protect everything, anywhere. We're there to recover applications and data and servers almost instantly with a single click. We have a solution that will protect, will basically add clustering to your local environment, your local infrastructure, and will also add that offsite DR component to build out that business continuity demand. Um, you can do it either what we call DR, which is you host the secondary site, or DRAS. DRAS is Disaster Recovery as a Service. It's Quorum's private cloud. Very quickly about Quorum's private cloud. We have our own data centers that we have built out infrastructure. We do not resell public cloud space. Why? Well, because we work very heavily in the financial and the healthcare districts, and we're, we're not going to put uh, customer data that we collect into a public cloud entity. We have built our own infrastructure, and we call it our private cloud. We encrypt everything in motion, and we also encrypt everything at rest. As soon as the data that we collect lands on the appliance, it's instantly encrypted. Archiving is absolutely native to us. You do not have to go to a third-party vendor to get, grab archiving. We're already holding your snapshots. Just tell us to hold it longer, and we will. Um, and then finally, you can do unlimited local and DR testing. With Quorum's cloud service, our DRAS service, there are no ingress, egress, or runtime charges. Think about that for a second when you compare us to AWS or Azure or any other cloud provider. You start paying the moment you turn them on. With us, you do not. You can run a DR self-test at any time with no impact to your bill. So what does it look like? The architecture is very simple. It's a Dell server that we, owe, we OEM our hardware through Dell. We add a couple very innovative uh, features, though. One, we leverage what's called NVMe cache. This is layer two caching. This allows us to get those IOPS speeds of 25,000. That, along with the fact that we use something called hypervisor pass-through, means that every time you boot a VM clone on the core appliance, it is going to have direct access to compute and storage. All data collection is over 10 gig networking. We're trying, what we're trying to do here is create a recovery solution that is future-proofed, that is designed to recover fast and operate even faster. A lot of times we see our, custom, our customers will come to us and say, hey, I had to fail over to you, and my failover speed, my recovery speed was actually faster than my production server. How'd you guys do it? Well, it's two main things. It's running in cache, SSD, and it's running with hypervisor pass-through. Again, we're, we are that unified solution that protects everything. And then you literally send a copy of it to Quorum's private cloud or your secondary data center. That's our solution. We're all about recovery. We make it as simple as possible. We have a web-based dashboard that is designed to be easy to use. Even a CEO can do it. You can call your CEO and say, hey, my exchange DAG is offline. We're having issues with it. Go ahead and press this button. And about a minute later, those exchange servers are now running on the Quorum appliance. You can let them run there for as long as you want. You can do this remotely because it's all IP-based. It is literally a single click. Let's, uh, let's show you guys what it looks like. If a, if a server goes down, what do we see on the dashboard? Well, we see a little red button. We're trying to make it as easy as possible for you guys to fail over. All you do is go to the IP address and click that red button and the server's back up and running. That is it. You get to choose the point in time that you recover from. Let's go back, let's roll back to the ransomware discussion. If you inadvertently back up bad data, 
how do you get back from it? How do you make sure that you recover from it? Well, you power it up from a snapshot from a previous point in time. It's that easy. Once you decide to power it on, that exchange server is now running on the core appliance at 25,000 IOPS. This is, a, this is a extremely fast recovery solution. If you lose your entire site, you literally can go to the off-site, either your secondary appliance or Quorum's cloud, press a button, and every single one of your servers will power up, again, getting 25,000 IOPS per VM, and they will take over for your entire site being down. That's how we get a business continuity solution um, out of this, this total solution. Question and answer, you guys. Tell me, uh, tell, give me some questions. Tell me what you guys think. Uh, fire away, please. All right, so we do have a few questions lined up for you. Let's see. Um, I just want to first let the audience know that you can refresh the screen whenever you get a chance and uh, go ahead and throw your questions out whenever they're available. Um, so let me uh, give you a few of them. Our first question is, do the backups, let me make sure I get that right, do the backups take a lot of networking Network bandwidth. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Yeah, not not typically. Uh, the the backups themselves, they're all going to run over 10 gig networking. Even if you don't have 10 gig mix or 10 gig switch switching, uh, you eventually can put that in place, and you're going to get even faster backups. But we do something that's called uh, incremental forever backups, meaning after we take that first snapshot, every backup after that is deduplicated be before being sent down to the appliance. This makes the backups fast and it makes it a fairly minimal impact on your network switching. Okay, and our second question we have here is, how would I do a recovery test if I'm using the Quorum Cloud? Uh, it's pretty simple. You go to the web-based dashboard of the Quorum Cloud, that is your instance. You will see every single one of your servers, um, and you can turn them on. You can either turn all of them on or just a subset that makes up an application group. Once those are on, they're going to be running up in Quorum's cloud. You can access this subnet or this IP space a couple different ways. You can either build a VPN and access it that way, or we also give you um, three external IP addresses for web services. So if you have web services that you need public access to, by all means, turn them on and create your secondary or your dynamic DNS records and do live testing of that DR site up in Quorum's cloud. It couldn't be easier. The dashboard itself is all IP based to do recovery, uh, as well as creating the virtual firewall and, and, and firewall uh, port forwarding rules to those services. So it's very flexible uh, and it's very inclusive. It, it's going to allow you to do a DR test at any time without extra charges. Okay, uh, another question from a listener is, can you explain how OnQ does its automatic test after each snapshot? Yeah, it's pretty straightforward. We take a snapshot of your server. It's an incremental snapshot. We check to make sure the data is, is good, it's valid, it's not corrupt, it's all been received correctly. We then update the recovery node. Recovery node is just a VM clone that we built um, on day one of the backups. Um, and then we power it on. We power on that VM to make sure that uh, it gets past post. It will get um, it, the recovery node will actually run if you need to have it run. And then you get a daily digest email. You can at any time either go to the dashboard and check the RN status or look at the email at the end of the day saying, okay, it built the RN, it tested it, everything's good to go. That is our version of assured recovery. Okay, Jason, how well does Quorum integrate into an existing infrastructure? Uh, well, we, we integrate very well. I mean, one of the things we do especially, especially well is integrate with other, um, other existing backup vendors and or existing uh, infrastructure. So if you, have, if you have various flavors of Windows and or applications or databases or even Linux in your environment, um, we're going to plug right in and start taking backups of that infrastructure. You could have infrastructure running on three different hypervisors and four different types of physical servers. It doesn't matter to us. We build a recovery node of the server that we're backing up, and it does not matter where it came from. It could be an EC2 instance. It could be uh, an Azure instance. 
It could be a physical server from uh, HP or Dell or, or a white box server, or it could be a VM from KVM or Hyper-V or VMware. Doesn't matter. We're going to plug right in and immediately start backing up the environment, creating clones of your environment. Um, all of this is covered in what we call Quick Start. It is our version of training. Uh, this is not a technology that you buy and we expect you to figure it all out. You buy it. We help you get it set up, and we're there for your entire experience for the entire life of the contract. So we are the one-stop call if you have an issue recovering or um, if, you need a, if you have a question about how, this, how the solution works. We are the person who warranties the hardware to the software to how it works. We are that one phone call uh, that you would have to make. Okay, Jason, what virtual machine hypervisors are supported? Um, yeah, I mean, uh, as far as hypervisor support, we are currently um, under a list of, of known uh, supported hypervisors, Hyper-V, uh, Zen, and VMware. Uh, we also have uh, worked with KVM and Acropolis. Um, so we're really along the lines of all the hypervisors out there that you could, that you could use. Uh, we'll be able to back it up. Now, there are some that we can do agentless, so we can do agentless backups of VMware, Hyper-V, and Zen. Um, if you're on KVM or Acropolis, we can also do agentless, but there's a few security checks that we'll have to do. Uh, we also have a very, very slim agent that we can install on the VMs. So think of it this way. We're not actually backing up the VMDK files or the VDI files. We're backing up from the VM itself. So that allows us to work into multiple hypervisors. Okay, and a couple more we have here. Let's see. If you have virtual and physical servers, can all be backed up with or on queue, or do I need another product? No, I mean, physical and virtual servers, no, we're, we're, we're going to be able to back up all of them. We are that unified uh, single BDR solution that customers look to for backing up everything. Um, we not only back up everything, but we create a clone of it as well. Uh, the, the, the idea here is that it does not matter what your environment has today, tomorrow, or five years down the road. We want to be that one backup vendor that will um, back up everything and provide you a way to instantly recover regardless of where that particular server came from. All right, one more for you. Jason, we have... Does Quorum integrate with our current Unitrends bare metal backup solution? We're not going to integrate with the, the Unitrends BMR solution. We would sit beside it, and we would take snapshots of your production servers right next to it. Um, we're going to be able to look at that backup data and uh, create, again, uh, VM clones of everything that we see there. Um, and, and trust me when I say that when we hear that Unitrends is your current, is your incumbent, incumbent uh, backup provider, we're going to do everything that we can from doing a POC, proof of concept. Uh, doesn't matter what it takes. We love to work into Unitrends customers because you will see within a few minutes why we are different and how we spec out our hardware, how we sell, our, sell and support our solution. Uh, recovery with us literally is a single click. The runbook could not be easier with Quorum, and the performance of failover and then the, per the, the performance of the running recovery nodes is faster than you're going to see with any of our competitors. All right. Well, looking into this, Jason, it seems as though we no one has any further questions. Um, if we run out of time, I'd like to thank Jason for his uh, informative presentation. I'd like to also thank Quorum for assisting with this and uh, bringing this information to us all. Um, if there's nothing else, a special thanks to the audience uh, for taking the time to actually attend and participate. Great. Thank you, everyone. I appreciated the time and the questions. I hope you guys have a great rest of your Thursday.